Shut up and sit down. Hello, guys and gals. It's me, Epic Dose, and today I'm gonna show you how to build a gaming PC. Uh, we have a $900 build here, as you can see. Uh, we got a Corsair Spec 02 Redshift, which means it's black with red interior part looking colors. <laughs> uh, we got the Hyper 212 Evo for a CPU van. We got the CX650M for a power supply. We got the GTX 10, uh, 1060 and by I think it's by PNY. We got a one terabyte Toshiba hard drive and we got the ASRock motherboard. We're gonna start with the motherboard. As you can see, it's the Z170 Pro 4. Um, when I do builds, I usually start with the motherboard. Uh, I'll put the processor in and add the fan, which you see here. And that's how I usually do it. Sometimes I'll put it in the case. Uh, it just depends. But most of the time, I'll put it. In, I'll put the processor and the cooler, if it's a aftermarket cooler. I'll put it on before I put it in the case because actually the cooler makes a good handle to hold the motherboard once you got it on there but here's the parts and here's the rest of the parts and we're gonna start building uh, the first thing we're gonna do is put this processor in the i5 it is the i5 6600 and most of this uh, most uh, Intel processors of this generation don't come with a stock fan so you have to buy an aftermarket fan anyway but here we go we lift this latch up and we're gonna put this processor in this sexy beauty right here like I said the i5 6600k uh, as you can see it has two indi indentions on the top there um, and it has a triangle and a circle on it uh, depending on what motherboard uh, the indentations on the top will tell you how to put it in here because it'll have two indentations when you put it in. Or it'll have a triangle and a dot to match up with. But either way, you don't want to put it in wrong. It's only supposed to go in one way. Put it in wrong, you will bend the, the socket pins and you'll have to get a new motherboard or straighten out the socket pins to put it in again because it will not work. So we got it in here. Uh, you want to latch it in. It does take a little bit of pressure. Don't be scared. As you can see, it has those little pieces on the side, so it'll hold the processor down. And we are ready to attach the fan. We got to put this bracket on, as you're going to see here shortly. And sorry, the video is made by my phone, and I'm doing it by myself. I could have had a friend shoot it while I built this, but... You're gonna have to deal with this horrible video shooting and camera holding Why I show you how to build this. Uh, Cause I did want to show people how to build a computer, but it's really hard to do by yourself while you're filming it and building it. So what we're gonna do is put this bracket on. This is probably the hardest part of building a computer is putting on these stupid aftermarket fans. And so we got the bracket on, pretty much just some nuts and bolts, our nuts and screws. Uh, you put through these holes and it attaches and everything has uh, you know instructions to put it on right I've done these enough that I don't even have to look at the instructions I build PCs all the time as you can see it has those standoffs right there to put the fan on and we're gonna add the thermal paste now a lot of people do this different some people put it on spread it evenly on the processor most people that I know of put it in the middle like I'm doing I do I change it up every time but I did it this way uh, you just put it about a, I'd say not even a dime size, but close to a dime size in the center. And then the, when you put the fan on the cooler on the processor, it will spread that thermal place evenly for you as it adheres. All right. So a lot of you newbies that don't build PCs all the time will forget to take this sticker off. Make sure you take it off. Otherwise, your cooler will not work properly and you'll have overheating issues. So we're going to put this fan on. Uh, you're going to want to take the black uh, fan off the fins of the cooler. 
so you can screw it in. But this is the way it's going to go in, the way I'm holding it. Uh, the black part of the... F see, as we go, we took that black fan off, and we're going to screw... You screw in these four screws, and you can only get to them if you take that fan off on that one side. You can use a Phillips or a flathead, depending on what fan you're putting on. Uh, they usually have, like, a one that can be used with both. It's going to be a rather small one. You just tighten it. Don't over tighten anything on any of this build. You do not want to strip screws. You just want to tighten it till it is snug. And we put the black fan back on now that we got that snugly tight. And we're going to put it in the case here. But as you can see, that's the way it sits on the motherboard. And once we put it in the case, you're going to see which way it faces but that's usually the most common way you can really direct the airflow the way you want here's the case and it's a pretty nice case I believe it was around 50 bucks but it's pretty awesome looking it has you know both sides come off and it allows access to the back plate and it has some um, cord management inside the case so it's a pretty good case for the money definitely a value case very 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 worth getting for your first builds like I said this is about $900 build and I, I would consider that almost like a close to budget to mid build uh, I'd say like the happy place is a thousand but as you can see here we're gonna put the motherboard in the case uh, in most cases they'll have the standoffs where the motherboard lines up to tighten the motherboard to the case already there you might have to move a few around this one pretty much had them in place but first you want to put this back plate in and you want to make sure you put it in the right way and it goes behind here I put the motherboard in there just to kind of see if the standoffs were in the right place but you don't want to put the motherboard in there until you put this back plate in and you want to make sure you put the back plate in right or you're going to be pulling the motherboard in and out and you don't want to really mess and touch that it's more than you have to but you see you line it up i always check and then all you do is you apply pressure and push it in be careful any of these metal pieces on the the cooler the back plate these aluminum metal pieces can cut you very easily they can cut you open pretty good so be careful you just push it in until it's fit right and as you can see we got it in and now we just line up these screw holes that like I said most cases will already have it set to this if not you just gotta move them around and all we do is screw it in with a flathead or a Phillips most likely a small Phillips is most most cases um, you'll get uh, screws with the case and as you can see the holes kind of pointing them out here I think there's about seven usually seven or eight on this size of board but you just tighten those till they're snug you don't over tighten you don't have to go super tight you just wait till they're nice and snug you want to be able to take them out and you don't want to strip the screw okay so that's the way the fan fits. We're going to put the black part of the fan on here now that we got it inside the case. Okay, we got the black piece of the fan. That's how it's going to sit in most cases, but like I said, you can design it the way you want. And now we're going to put the other parts in, the Toshiba hard drive and the power supply. Uh, in most modern cases, the power supply goes on the bottom. Um, in most cases, so and everything pretty much has a spot. Once you've built these a few times, you're gonna start to realize you don't have to look at any instructions or anything because they all have a spot. We're also gonna put the once we get the power supply in and the hard drive in, we're gonna put the memory and the graphics card in. So here we go, let's put this hard drive in. Now on these newer cases, uh, these uh, the older cases you have to screw them in, but now these newer cases they just latch in. You can screw them in too if you're 
scared that your Hargrave is going to move around. But in most cases, just pushing them in and locking them in, they're not going to go anywhere, even if you're picking it up and carrying it a lot. So you can put it there. I mean, you can put it in any one of those slots, but I just put it in the top one. It's just a matter of preference. But like I said, you could screw it in the side if you want to be more secure. And most of those screws will come with the, uh, the case. All right, so now we're going to put the power supply in, and it goes on the bottom here. And it fits right into there. There's this, you know, little lip, and it fits towards the back. It'll fit exactly in there. And then all you do is you screw in the four screw holes that line up in the back with the screws that came with it. Take these screws, like I said, and you just screw them in with a Phillips or a flathead. Literally, all you need to do most computer builds is a Phillips or a flathead screwdriver and an anti-static wristband. Um, you can get uh, PC build kits offline or Best Buy or Micro Center. I don't know what you have, you know, in your state. But anywhere that sells computer parts, they'll have the PC build kits, or you can get them off Newegg or Tiger Direct online. Um, yeah, you definitely want to use that anti-stack strap, because if you don't, you can really mess up stuff, and you'll probably be buying more stuff, because it can basically blow out your stuff, blow out your video card, blow out anything, cause problems. But anyway, we're going to hook up the case cords. Uh, we got the HD audio, the two fans... Uh, they're all going to hook to the motherboard, also the power, the reset, and stuff like that. And there's that bracket. This is the other side of the case. Like I said, the most cases now have where you can get to the back of it without, without taking it all out. As you see, we got the wire management on the side there, too. Okay, so we're going to start plugging in these cords. This is the CPU cord. Uh, motherboards these days, they pretty much list where everything goes um, this CPU cord goes in the top corner there it's hard to see with my I'm recording with my phone so sorry but it's there and it'll say CPU right there and it literally just plugs in and it only plugs in one way in most cases everything's listed on the board SATA cables are listed uh, USB 3.0 are listed everywhere that something plugs into is listed so it's pretty easy right now but you do want to kind of keep you want to arrange these cords you know, through this, the wire management stuff on the, the little oval circle things on the side, so they're not all inside your where your fans are blowing. You want them to be behind your motherboard. But as you can see, everything's listed. So we're just gonna cut to having them all plugged in. As you can see, we got the USB 3.0 cord plugged in. We got the uh, main plug there in and then we got the CPU cord up top in the corner and then on the bottom we got uh, it says fan 1 and fan 2 case fans we got those plugged in and then the, probably the hardest part is this one I'm pointing at right now these are the power on the reset the the LEDs and stuff like that they can be hard because they're so small and not all boards list them this one did but you can also look in your manual for the motherboard and it will tell you how to set those as well as the rest of the cords but like I said nowadays it pretty much tells you where everything goes now we're just gonna attach the hard drives uh, SATA drive and their and its power cord or SATA drive SATA cord and the power cord and we're also gonna put in the video card and its power attach the power cord to that Okay, so as you can see, we got the hard drive plugged in with its uh, SATA cord and its power cord going to the PSU. We also got the the power the cord from the PSU going to the video card. As you can see, that goes into the PSI slot. Like I said, everything's listed, and all the stuff's in the motherboard. It'll tell you where it goes if you're trying to figure it out. And uh, there's tons of video guides out there, and you know, magazines that will tell you how to do this stuff. As you can see, everything's listed and everything's plugged in. The SATA cord, as you can see down here that I'm pointing at, it says SATA, so you know SATA cords go there.
And they only can fit one way, so... That's how you know, like, they are clearly the, the cord that goes there, because they're the only cord that can go there. Alright, so we're pretty much almost done here. All we need to do is add the memory, or the RAM, and what we're going to have to do is put it into the second... There's four slots, as you can see there. My, like I said, my camera's not that great. It's on my phone, but there's four slots we can put in the second and fourth. The reason we can't do it the first or third is because that big black cooler fan is blocking the first slot. We could make it work, but we don't want to force anything. So we're putting the second and fourth. And the reason you're doing second and fourth is that does dual channel. Um, makes it work in dual channel. And that's what you want to do. And in this build, the guy had eight gigabytes. A ballistic ram like I said we're putting it into the second and fourth and that is pretty much the build guys we are basically done um, all we do from here is we uh, will he didn't get an optical drive or you know like a CD drive or anything so we have to load his windows on from a USB drive you just basically, once you got all this stuff in, you turn it on, make sure it's, it starts up. You load the windows. If you have an optical drive, you use a CD. If you don't, you use a USB and you do it that way. And that's what we did. And there's your $900 bill, guys. Hope you liked watching. Hope I helped you guys out. I know it was a crappy uh, video camera viewing, but thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. Love ya.